All right, you guys, welcome back to some videos. Um, hopefully you printed out your notes for 4.3 and 4.4. I'm going to give you a reminder on long division. So we're going to take 77 divided by 4. We can write that with our long division bar as 4 going into 77. The first thing we want to do is we want to figure out just that first number. 4 can go into 7 how many times? Well, one time. And then we can multiply 1 times 4, and we're going to write it right down here. Okay, then we're going to subtract these from each other. So 7 minus 4 gives me a 3, and then I'm going to bring down the next number. Now, 4 can't go into 3, so we're going to expand it to the next two digits. 4 can go into 37 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. Subtract those from each other. I have 1 left over. Nothing else to bring down, so 4 can't go into 1. So I know that 77 divided by 4 is 19 with a remainder of 1. The other way you're going to see this is 19 plus your remainder divided by the thing that was dividing into your number. So this 4 right here is this 4 right here. So just a friendly reminder on long division. We're going to save that first example in class because it is a little bit hefty, but I'll do example number two with you. Okay, so oops. I'm going to divide x minus 2 into 4x. Uh oh, let's make that look a little better. 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 7. All right, so we're going to take just that x value that's on the outside, and I want to figure out x times something is going to give me this 4x cubed. This x times that circle has got to give me that 4x cubed. Well, that's going to be 4x squared. Now take that 4x squared and multiply him to both of those values. So that's going to give me this 4x cubed minus 8x squared. Now, Ms. Essner has this saying, and I really like it, draw the line and change the sign. So we're really subtracting, but when we subtract, we can change those signs. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed, those are gone. That was the goal. Now, negative 3x squared plus 8x squared, 5x squared. Bring down everything that's remaining. Start the process over. This x on the outside times something has to give me a 5x squared. That's going to be a positive 5x. Now multiply him to both guys. 5x squared minus 10x. Draw the line. Change the sign. 5x squared minus 5x squared, but by x plus 10x, 11x, bring down whatever's remaining. Repeat your process. x on the outside times something has to give me this 11x. That's going to be a positive 11. Multiply him to both values. I'm going to get 11x minus 22. Draw your line, change the sign. Give myself just a little more room here. There we go. Draw the line, change the signs to everything. That's going to give me 0x and 29. So I know that my quotient is whatever was at the top of that division bar. So the quotient is 4x squared plus 5x plus 11 with a remainder of 29, because I can't go into 29 anymore. You might see that written as 4x squared plus 5x plus 11, your quotient, plus your remainder divided by what you were dividing by, this x minus 2. So plus 29 divided by x minus 2. Just in case my math lab has it a little bit weird so you can recognize that. All right, let's go ahead and flip over to synthetic division. When the divisor is a linear binomial, 
we can use synthetic division instead of long division. So there are times where you have to use long division, um, but most of the time you can choose either synthetic or long. So um, take that away. It doesn't really need to be there. We're going to do the exact same division that we just did on the previous page, but I'm going to show you how to do it with synthetic division. With synthetic division, you need the zero. So x minus 2 is currently a factor. The zero of that, set it equal to zero, and we know that it's just going to be a positive 2. The zero goes in its own little box off to the side. Then you're going to write the numbers, just the numbers, of each term. So I'm going to take those numbers, positive 4, negative 3, positive 1, positive 7. Skip some space, draw a line. With synthetic division, you always bring down your first number. Just bring him down. Then those bottom numbers multiply with your number in the box. So 4 times 2 gives me an 8. Now add these two numbers together, positive 5. Now re-multiply. 5 times 2 gives me 10. Add those numbers together, I get an 11. Time to multiply. 11 times 2 gives me 22. Add those together, I get a 29. When you're done, this number is always your remainder. This one is just the number, the constant. This is your x. This is your x squared. If we had no more numbers, we'd be going x cubed, x to the fourth, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until we're done. So I know this answer is going to look like a 4x squared plus 5x plus 11 with a remainder of 29. And if you flip over to the front of your sheet, you'll see we got the exact same answer, synthetic, long division, just two different animals. All right, let's try another. Let's go ahead and look at example number four. So this one has a little bit of a trick to it, and I'll show you. But the first thing, remember, is we want the zero. We do not want the factor. So the zero is negative three. That's what goes in its own little box to the side. We're going to take all the numbers, just the numbers. Ooh, but there's an x missing. So there's going to be really a zero x. We can't forget about that. So we have to put in a placeholder. So we're going to have two, seven, zero, negative five. If you're missing any terms, you do need to write those. Bring down your first number. Multiply negative 3 times 2 for a negative 6. Add those together, positive 1. Time to multiply. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Add those together, negative 3. Multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. Add 4. Last number is your remainder. Constant x, x squared, etc. And if there were more, we would just continue to write more. So this answer is going to be a 2x squared plus 1x minus 3 with a remainder of 4. So one nice thing is there's this thing called the remainder theorem. So on example number 5, use the remainder theorem to find p of negative 7. Now you are more than welcome to just go 5 times negative 7 to the 4th plus 30 times negative 7 cubed, 40 negative 7 squared, 36 negative 7 plus 14. But holy cow, I'm running out of room, and that's a lot to figure out. So there's another way you can do it, and it's with synthetic division. So negative 7 is already a 0, so he's going to go on the little box off on its own. Now take all the numbers, making sure that if we were missing a term, we need to include it, but I'm going to just write those. So 5, 30, negative 40, negative 36, and 14. Ooh, that 4 got a little funky. Okay, skip, draw your line, bring down your first guy, time to multiply. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. Add. Multiply, add, multiply, add, and last, multiply, add. Your remainder 
is this thing called the remainder theorem. P of negative 7 is equal to your, remain, your remainder. So if you were to plug in negative 7 into your calculator and you just go to town, you're going to get out neg or positive 21. One faster method, especially if you don't have a calculator, and you might not have a calculator for this question on your test, you want to just do synthetic division to find that value. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about for 4.3. Four, Let's go ahead and jump into 4.4. Four. Okay, so we'll fill out this part together. So every polynomial of degree n has exactly n roots. A quadratic, two roots. Cubic, three roots. Four, three, four roots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have a 10th degree polynomial, you need 10 zeros or 10 roots or 10 answers. If a polynomial has a complex zero, a plus bi, that's a complex number, then the conjugate is also a zero. If you have an irrational zero, something like a plus the square root of b, irrational, like the square root of 2 is an irrational number, then its conjugate, a minus the square root of b, is also a zero. The way I always like to say this is, like, if you have a weird zero, it has to have a buddy. Don't let him go alone. So you're going to see questions where they're not going to tell you all the zeros, but if you see something with an I or you see a nasty square root, you know that its buddy also is in there, even if they don't tell you. Okay, so just be careful on that. Um, all right, let's do this first guy together. Find a polynomial degree 3 having zeros. So the zeros are 1, 3i, negative 3i. Now they already have all the zeros there. 3i and negative 3i, those are kind of weird. So they have to travel together and they are conjugates. So life is good. First thing we want to do is we want to write those as factors. x minus 1, x minus 3i, x plus 3i. So there's a difference between a zero and a factor. We want to be careful that we actually write them differently. Now, if we have to multiply this all out to find the polynomial, please multiply your conjugates first because things will cancel. It's kind of nice. So if I multiply those first, I'm going to get x squared plus 3ix minus 3ix minus 9i squared. Simplifying that, it's going to give me x squared, bye bye to your plus 3ix minus 3ix plus 9. i squared being negative 1. Now multiply these two together. I'm going to get x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9. So that's a cubic function with zeros of 1. 3i and negative 3i. All right, I'm going to see those next two examples to do in class with you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had fun with those notes. Talk to you guys later.